my role in internet development, uh, I have been involved in the setting up of the National Research Network in the Netherlands and uh, have been the managing director uh, of SurfNet uh, from the start in 88 until my retirement last year. And the task of SurfNet was to provide an advanced research network for the research and higher education community in the Netherlands. Netherlands. And as such, we had to push the envelope all the time. So uh, in the 80s, uh, networking was sketchy. There were all kinds of private networks and there was this major OSI development that would solve all the future networking problems but didn't deliver yet. And then the internet came around and that was the only way really to bring advanced services to the research community at that time. So we got involved in that automatically. And uh, of course, uh, being uh, responsible for pushing the envelope, I got involved in pushing the internet envelope as well. There were some, of course, moments that, that were, you could call disruptive, that mentality changed and then things were um, uh, moving forward. Um, in the beginning, uh, in Europe, we had PTT monopolies and we had to use their services, no other way. In the Netherlands, we were lucky that the PTT and the government uh, allowed us to move ahead of that. And the PTT provided us with uh, bandwidth that we were allowed to use for our networks and we were no longer forced to use their networks. In their view, that of course would only be temporary and after they would have implemented that for everybody, we would come back and use their services. Uh, of course, in the end, uh, it turned out that the PTT services in Europe were not able to serve the research community and the internet came around and even today the PTT serve internet services to everybody, of course. So we made a whole circle and in that time frame, uh, we had to pass many hurdles and uh, the first one was, of course, getting bandwidth which we were lucky in the Netherlands. Uh, the second one was getting bandwidth that scaled because the needs of these uh, users uh, grow exponentially. Uh, there were, uh, researchers could always use whatever was available. And we were lucky again in the Netherlands that uh, we were allowed to provide these internet services in parallel to our future developments. And uh, so the users didn't have to wait until the final network was there uh, and of course in the end the final network <laughs> never came around and the internet continued. Well I think the internet is pretty cloudy today. I would say that it is more than partly cloudy uh, and we risk storms and we better be prepared for that. Uh, it's obvious that the internet is a tremendous success and the world is not prepared to live without it anymore. At the same time, it has never been designed to provide the services it is assumed to do today. So it's, it's a lot of uh, difficulties and we have to move ahead of that. So we, in my view, we really need a clean slate to solve these problems. Uh, Continue to patch the internet is no longer working. We have really, really uh, reached the end of that. It's amazing how that patchwork has survived so long and uh, how many more things have been possible than ever been sought when, uh, when it was designed. But we have now reached the end in my view and a clean slate is needed and that means uh, more research is needed. Uh, of course, there's the additional handicap that it has to be compatible with what we have because no one wants to get uh, out of this anymore. We, we have seen the benefits and uh, we have to continue with that. Well, my fear is that people will continue to try to patch the existing internet. And my hope is that people will really uh, have the courage to start with a new, uh, well-designed 
internet, based on what we now know about what the real needs are, what the, what the internet needs to serve, and then uh, implement that. What does a well-designed internet look like? Well, it, uh, the current internet has uh, some fundamental design flaws. It, it, it has never been designed to deal with mobility, with multi-homing, uh, security. And these are essential elements of a future-proof network. Current internet doesn't scale to serve the whole world. It doesn't scale. We, we found some patches to do voice over the internet. but. Now you have to do video over the internet. You're making video now. Uh, you need another internet. And when you walk around with your mobile phone, you want another internet to be served by that phone much more, uh, much better than you are today. Again, governments uh, have to step in and, and fund appropriate researchers to design this, uh, this new uh, network. And, uh, of course, uh, take the risk that a number of vested interests uh, will oppose it, but nevertheless support building something new that serves the users in the end.